Except to tell you that tonight the Southeastern Michigan Association They're going to show up, and, and that'll get things off to a good start. we got a couple of teams. Uh, one, speaking of not getting off to a good start, Southfield lost their first six. They've beaten Andover. They've beaten Hazel Park. A lot of it's because they've lost a lot of people. Newble, Lowe, uh, Ball, um, um, uh, James Harris. Uh, I mean, that's that's a lot of people to lose off of a team that won 17 games. Ferndale's got people back, and in this wide-open Southeastern Michigan Association, uh, any team that wants to take charge can probably have the league championship. We have two teams. Teams that are at the opposite end of the spectrum. Southfield, with all their losses, wasn't expected to do a great deal this year. Where Ferndale, on the other hand, they're the team picked to win the league. They're having problems finding their identity. Southfield's having problems with their identity. Tonight, they come together. Southfield's looking for the upset. Interesting in the Ferndale situation, they are four and three coming into tonight's game. Uh, they've lost a couple of games. One they maybe shouldn't have lost to Hazel Park. One that they may have been able to win had they not had a three-week layoff, and that was when they came back after Christmas to play Pontiac Northern. So it's, it's been a rather interesting season for the Ferndale Eagles, but the nice thing for Don McNeil in his third year, and by the way, we congratulate Don. He's a father again, and uh, we will uh, talk a little bit more about that later, but at least he's got some guys coming back. In fact, uh, he's got the youth and the experience all rolled up into two players. Well, Jared Stevens is one of the outstanding young talents in the state. He's only a junior. He was their leading scorer as a sophomore. Uh, everybody's looking at him as a possible Big Ten recruit. Uh, he has to show more consistency. He goes to the board very well. He rebounds. He's a putback man. Uh, he's got to develop his touch. But on the other hand, they got a young sophomore, Rashad Phillips. Phillips was on the varsity as a freshman. He is outstanding. You talk about potential. That's with a capital P. Handles the ball, shoots it, but ball handling is his forte. Well, as the Southfield Blue Jays are going to go this year. There's definitely going to be a lot of pressure put on this young man, and that is Charles Cartwright. You see his numbers, and Charles Cartwright, when he comes to play, can be a very, very big force inside. He suffered a, a head injury uh, in the game uh, the other night against Hazel Park that required 14 stitches, and that was after he had scored 14 points in the first half and the early stages of the third quarter. But he will be in the lineup tonight, and Harry Vandenberg needs him very badly uh, to supplement uh, a young man who really didn't play a whole lot last year, and that is Paul Hubbard. The only reason Hub didn't play a whole lot was because of the people that were in front of him. But he is their leading scorer, as, as the uh, statistics will show you right there. And Paul Hubbard is a young man they're going to depend on. He's their best three-point shooter, and hopefully uh, that he and Cartwright can provide an inside and outside game for uh, this basketball team that is getting better. Uh, they are going to add a couple of ball players after the semester break, after the Lathrop game, or maybe for the Lathrop game. Uh, and it should be very interesting to see how Southfield comes out of the ashes rather than uh, you know, the other way around, which uh, actually they ended up uh, getting burned at, uh, at Catholic Central at the end of every year. And I know, Frank, uh, Art corinthi has got to be the most relieved man in the place now. Uh, they finally got out of the band box. Well, they've been going to Catholic Central for the districts a number of years now. And it became a mental thing. They went in there with some great ball clubs. Prior to that, they had played a district at this gymnasium, and it dominated it. They got into a negative rut. They're going to try to turn it back into a positive one. And building for the districts, no question about it. But as we mentioned just a second ago, we'll take you to break with this thought. This is, you can either call it a weak league, or you can call it a very competitive league, the Southeastern Michigan Association. Somebody has to step up and say, we want the championship. And it isn't going to take a whole lot. If a team is is uh, focused, they should be able to take this championship, whether it be Troy, whether it be Ferndale, or maybe a team like the Southfield Blue Jays who can get uh, healthy in a hurry in a very competitive Southeastern Michigan Association. It's the Ferndale Eagles, the Southfield Blue Jays from my old school on the corner of Ten and Lasser, and we'll come back with the opening lineups and the tip-off for this SMA battle in just a moment.
W at uh, Southfield High School and to uh, get this game underway prior to the national anthem they'll introduce the starting lineups and uh, we will go down to uh, one of the most successful track coaches in Oakland County and that includes uh, Lee Abram <laughs> and uh, let us go down to Tom Ashman the boys track coach here at Southfield as he introduces tonight's starting lineups. For Ferndale, senior forward, number 33, Andre Watkins. For Southfield, senior forward, number 24, Paul Ardafio. For Ferndale, Senior forward, number 44, Sean Hoppy. For Southfield, senior forward, number 40, Charles Cartwright. For Ferndale, junior center, number 54, Jarrett Stevens. For Southfield, junior center, number 45, Ken Williams. For Ferndale, sophomore guard, number 23, Rashad Phillips. For Southfield, junior guard, number 23, Robert Otis. For Ferndale, senior guard, number 32, Amar Hermes. For Southfield, senior guard, number 42, Paul Hubbard. Ferndale is coached by Mr. Don McNeil. Southfield is coached by Mr. Harry Vandenbrink and assisted by Mr. Hank Mulder. Your officials for tonight's contest are Mr. Art Zisk and Mr. Dennis Banke. Right now our national anthem uh, pre-recorded for broadcast at this time. get back into this one we got to talk about the one that was played before this contest as the two teams uh, interestingly enough uh, good sportsmanship meeting at center court we never, never saw that Frank before the two teams coming out and uh, shaking hands and uh, that's a nice way to start a game well, I know everybody's working real hard at, at trying to get uh, themselves you know in the sportsmanship mode with all this trash talking and everything that we've seen the last few years they're trying to get the high school kids to realize it's still a sport. Got to tell you what we saw in the first game, JV game, Southfield team down about 17 points, and the, the brand-new JV coach, uh, Gary Weiserman, uh, got him back, got him going, uh, paced by Chris Jackson, who had three three-pointers in the fourth quarter. He had five altogether. He had 24 points, 13 points in the fourth quarter, leading the Blue Jays to a 69-63 junior varsity victory over the... 
Ferndale Eagles. What a great comeback. And the Harry Vandenbrink has a lot of nice things to say about Gary, about, uh, you know, you've got to have the good feeder system. And, uh, and uh, so we congratulate Gary and also the Southfield Blue Jay Junior Varsity. We are underway here at the corner, and I should point out the fact that there has been no school here for the last, what, three days or so. Uh, records day today, the end of the semester, and of course the two chill-out days, uh, the last couple of days. And so, to uh, use an old Skip Carey line, we have a partial sellout. They try to get the ball quickly inside to Hoppy, but uh, the Blue Jays come down with it. Well, Ferndale looks real patient, and offense going to try to pick up the Southfield zone apart. Yeah, they get the ball in the scene, didn't put it down. Paul Hubbard will move it left side to Charles Cartwright. With a nice little uh, bandage above his right eye. Had the 19 stitches, caught an elbow, an in, uh, inadvertent elbow against Highland Park, Hazel Park the other day. Jared Stevens on the steal, tight ropes the sideline, but a good knock away by Owens. He's on the ground, but uh, he travels. Can't really say he walks because uh, you got to be on your feet to do that. Well, after the steal, Otis does a great job of getting himself back in where at least he gets to tie up the jump ball and uh, or travel and, and they don't have an opportunity to convert the fast break. The man to watch, too, is 45, Ken Williams, who has uh, come back to this basketball team with uh, playing with some great verve. Jarrett Stevens, an off-balance jumper. No, Hermes gets the rebound, but it's taken away and another good hustle play by Robert Otis. Hub will bring it up now. Looking inside, now goes underneath to Cartwright. Ball slapped away. Grabbed by Hermes, and he's on his way. Amar Hermes. It looks like one of those games the ball's going to be uh, played above the rim, and they're going to go get it. Stevens, we talked about his uh, working on his outside shooting. He sets up and buries one early. Well, contrary to anything you've heard or seen, Jared Stevens is a junior, as Frank uh, properly identified him. The roster that they gave us uh, indicated that he was a senior, and I didn't think he'd been around that long. I know there's a lot of SMA opponents that wish that he was a senior right now. Off the baseline, beautifully delivered by Sean Hoppy. Well, they're doing a great job of penetrating, attacking the baseline, getting the shots. Uh, Southfield's fortunate to only be five down because Ferndale picked them apart. Hoppy coming in, uh, averaging about six and a half points a game and we'll get another turnover the second turnover of the basketball game for the Southfield Blue Jays well Dennis Banky the old star from Detroit St. Thomas played over there with Frank Orlando our friend from uh, the girls basketball coach at Detroit Country Day and the great baseball coach over there as well Stevens forces it over Williams and Jarrett will go to the free throw line but you know, Jar Jarrett's so big and strong Jim he's, if he attacks the basket he's going to go to the line He's shot more than uh, twice as many free throws as anyone else on his team so far. You see him find the seam, he gets a pass, steps into it. He's unstoppable from there. You're gonna have to put him at the line. He's big, he's strong, and he's quick. For every four free throws that uh, Ferndale has attempted this year, Jared has attempted one. And he's a 69% foul shooter. One thing about Jared Stevens, and I think it's going to come with maturity, that he needs to concentrate on his the basketball game and not the ancillary things that are going on. And and as he has matured, as he's gone from freshman to sophomore to junior, uh, he has improved in that area quite a bit. And that, that will make him a good collegian, and it'll make him just a better all-around basketball player. Well, yeah, the word around the league is talk to him. You know, get him off his game and. Uh, you know, that's a that's a bad uh, thing to have going against you. You just have to go and remember what you're there for. Blue Jays in a piston-like drop. We've played almost three minutes, and they haven't scored. 5-10 to go first quarter, 6 nothing in favor of the Ferndale Eagles. Paul Hubbard tried to force it inside to Williams. Jarrett Stevens against Cartwright, and Cartwright tries to cut him off but reached in to do so. So Cartwright picks up his first foul, and it's Jarrett Stevens back to the line. Well, I don't think they realize how quick Stevens is. That's his second pickoff out there near midcourt. He gets down. He does a great job of making the contact on the layup. The ball doesn't go down. He still goes to the line. A lot of those are going to fall, and he's going to have the three. A lot of colleges already looking at Jared Stevens. I see Wayne State's here tonight. Yep, Ron Hammy. Great program down there. In fact, uh, the 
alma mater not only of yours truly, but also of the assistant coach of the Southfield Blue Jays, Hank Mulder, who uh, caught some passes for the football team here and there as well. That one went off a of Cartwright and out of bounds, although they're going to give it to the Blue Jays. Looked like Hoppy might have touched it off for Cartwright. So Stevens won out of three from the line, and Paul Hubbard stepped on the inbounds uh, line as he was trying to inbounds the basketball. It was not he, but it was rather 24, Paul Ardafio. Well, that was a tough pass right off the shoe tops. Came right back to him. Didn't have a chance to get back inbounds. And stepping out of bounds there was uh, Jared Stevens. Now we're going to get our first substitution of the basketball game, number 42. They're going to, oh, Hubbard's going to come back in the basketball game. No, I'm sorry. Hubbard comes back in along with 22. There we go. Liddell Shepard. Not a lot of the guys on the floor right now played a lot of minutes for Southfield. Hubbard and uh, Cartwright probably more than anybody else. It's a three for Hubbard if it goes, and it's a missed good rebound attempt there by... Putbacks, he's got six of their eight. And he delivers the first foul of the game for the Ferndale Eagles to number 22, and that is Liddell Shepard. Well, Shepard did a great job of what every little man's got to do when they're attacking the big man. You've got to make contact. Go climb up him and don't go and back off. You don't leave air in between. Does a great job of attacking him. You can see the bump and he goes to the line, and that's how you go after a big man. Was it not Liddell Shepard that had that great football game against, uh, I believe it was against Lathrop? Yes. What a tremendous, tremendous game he had. It was fun to watch. He goes uh, to the foul line, and uh, so far from the line this year, Liddell Shepard was at 56%. He splits the pair and gets the Blue Jays on the board. What, three minutes and 26 seconds into the contest. This will be a three if it goes, and it's uh, in the hands of Ardafio, but quickly back of the Ferndale Eagles. Shepard will bring it up. Stevens meets him. If they get a little more motion in their uh, offense, a little more quick passing, they may be able to break this a little bit easier. Well, you know, we talk about inexperience, and they you put pressure on the young ball player. That's how you get them to turn the ball over. So far, Ferndale, the experienced team, has attacked Southfield and uh, has everything their way so far four minutes into the game. Hermes, Watkins, and Hoppy are all seniors. Uh, Stevens a junior, and Phillips is a sophomore. Shepard to the hole, and uh, I, like it. I like the quickness of the sophomore, Liddell Shepard. He has all three Blue Jay points, and they've cut it to five. When knew, we knew he was quick in football, and he's showing it out here. And uh, Ferndale, that's a, you know, inspiration shot. And that's uh, time to send in a sub, folks. Hermes uh, way outside. Great move by Paul Hubbard to the hole, and he is taken to the uh, Blue Jay hardwood, but uh, he will go to the free throw line, and we'll check the foul. It's going to be on number 44, Sean Hoppy. That's the first on Hoppy, the second on Ferndale. Well, here's the dribble pressure again, and uh, they get Ferndale in the help mode, and they make body contact. That's how you get to the line. Southfield's doing a good job of having dribble penetration, getting themselves to the free throw line. Hubbard, 58% uh, from the line, and he gets that one to go. And I'll tell you something, that is uh, Professor Plakis's uh, claim to fame, talking about penetration, and uh, a lot of good things will happen, and Hub gets his first two points of the game. Well, you can't win at any level. The pros, everybody else, penetration sets everything up, whether it be the three-pointer or the layup. Great pass inside that time, and Andre Watkins gets his first two points of the game, and uh, Watkins are coming into the contest averaging about six and a half points a game. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. The Blue Jays uh, took about three and a half minutes to score. They have scored most of the last few points in the game. It's a walk by Shepard, no call. Hubbard will take the three off balance, a back iron miss. Cartwright puts it back up and down. Well, Cartwright can dominate inside. He's the, he's the biggest man. He's got that quick jumping ability, but he's got to keep himself in position just like he did to be able to get to the ball. And like I said, with Williams in there, he's got some help so he can uh, do a few things. And like there, where they uh, got the ball into Watkins, and Watkins gets it up and down. But what I was going to say is they were able to sag and double team a little bit and uh, with two big men. 
Well, you saw the strength of Jared Stevens getting the ball, finding the open man. Uh, they've talked about it not being uh, Come on, man. Uh, looking for his teammates, but he sure has been tonight. Paul Hubbard has four. That was a tough drive. Almost a steal, and he is a steal. He stepped out of bounds. Great steal attempt by Paul Ardafio, and we're going to get a substitution now. A young man who we have seen since his freshman days playing football for the Southfield Blue Jays, and that is Anthony Austin, number 41, because the Michigan High School Athletic Association doesn't allow you to wear 88. I think they should have a uh, special cable. Um, what do you want to call it? It's a three if it goes. Wow. Yeah, Steve is just picking his spot. But, Jim, I think they put numbers on the uniforms for the media to start with. That's yeah. how the whole number thing started. <laughs> so now you want to rearrange that. Okay. Just for us, any of the football players can wear their same numbers. Just wanted to do it for my own, my own benefit. A cable dispensation, a walk by Cartwright. That's the fifth turnover by the Southfield Blue Jays. Make it the seventh Blue Jay turnover. Ferndale has only two. Minute and a half to go, first quarter. 14 to 9, our score. Cross court pass, it goes to uh, Walker, who's uh, in the basketball game. That is Michael Walker. Sets it underneath. That'll count if it goes for Stevens. And Jared Stevens takes care of business again. He has already 10 of the 16 points so far scored by the Ferndale Eagles. He's back to try another. Well, you let him down in the box. He's going to eat you up. He's big. He's strong. They're trying to, you know, deny him the basketball. He's too big. He seals you off, takes it up strong, puts it in, goes to the line. Anthony Austin draws the foul. The miss is picked up by Hoppy. He came up, went down, should have been called for a walk. No, and they get, now they're going to give a jump ball. Jump ball. There was alternate possession. There was a tie up there. Looked like he came down without anybody having a hand on the ball. So Stevens misses another free throw. He's one out of five. Shepard off the baseline. Little shy and a tap by Cartwright. Well, I'll tell you, they've gone to that zone defense uh, Ferndale has, and uh, Cartwright's been able to get himself in the seam in front of that basket, get that tip in. Well, Rashad Phillips threw that ball into the sparsely populated uh, seats across the way. Now back in the ball game is Robert Otis. And Paul Ardafio will sit down for the Blue Jays. So it is Otis along with Hubbard and Shepard and Austin and Cartwright. Shepard, good pass inside the double A, knocked out of bounds by Hoppy. And so, five point lead, 48.6 to go, first quarter. Ferndale side, Paul Hubbard, three pointer, no, and Shepard follows, no. Cartwright follows, and he'll go to the line. So the Blue Jays, oh no. Will they call goaltending? No, they're going to call uh, Cartwright coming over the back on the uh, yep. on the rebound. That's his second, so we'll see if he'll bring Williams in for the last 43.9. Nope. Well, you're a coach. You like the kid to stay aggressive, and uh, that's a tough call because he was going to the basket strong. Yeah, they've been aggressive on the board so far tonight both ways. Hoppy looking inside for Stevens. will shoot the long one. It's no good. Good job by Watkins. He comes down with it. Shepard got a hand on it, but Stevens tips it in. He's got great timing, great strength. And uh, you saw what they were talking about. He shot the ball, didn't draw much iron, works his way back, gets the tip in. I tell you, the crowd could be starting to yell, oops, Jared is. Because uh, he has been... Uh, he has been strong in the first quarter. Five seconds, four. They get a screen for Hub. It's a three on the way. It's short. Cartwright oh, puts it up. Oh, and shit. it does not go. Well, the Southfield Blue Jays had a scoring siesta the first three and a half minutes of the first quarter. Fortunate to be down only by seven after one, thanks in part to 12 Jared Stevens points. Basketball vernacular, uh, that was uh, his sixth and the team's second. Uh, as far as the children are concerned, uh, yeah, Jer uh, they're, uh, Don McNeil and his wife uh, with their second child, and we congratulate uh, Don. Remember Don, uh, the assistant coach at Oak Park High School, and uh, Keith Stevens is here, his brother-in-law, and there's Art Zisk. And uh, Mr. Zisk is another uh, Catholic leaguer, if I'm not mistaken, back in the, uh, the vintage years. 
ball loose in the middle, and uh, we'll give you the uh, lineup. Actually, it's the lineup that left. Shepard and Otis and Cartwright and Anthony Austin and Paul Hubbard. And we're going to get a push underneath uh, that time. We're actually a little bit further outside than underneath. It's going to be on Rashad Phillips, and that's going to be his second, uh, first, and the third team foul. You know, we mentioned the officials. They're doing a great job of keeping this game under control, Jim. They're, uh, they're calling it tight, but they're being consistent with it. Cartwright. Oh, Rashad. Uh, I hope I don't call him Rashad Griffith because uh, he's quite a basketball player in his own right with Wisconsin. We will mention, by the way, those of you who are watching this game intending to go out and see Southfield and Southfield Lathrop on Tuesday night. I'll tell you about this in just a second. Cartwright got fouled by Stevens down low. The crowd doesn't like it, but the foul came where nobody was watching except the officials. Fans watch the ball. The officials have to watch the whole body. Well, and also, you know, Cart Cartwright felt he got the bad call earlier in uh, you know, it's his turn. You got to go. That's a 50-50 time. It's like he had his hand on his elbow as he was trying to go up for the and shot. He also was real active with that left arm, too. Blue Jays trail by seven. Nobody scored here in the second quarter. There are some rules and regulations about getting tickets for the Blue Jays and the Chargers on Tuesday. We will give them to you shortly. And if you plan on going, plan on sticking around and watching these because we don't want you to be left out. Then again, if you're left out, you watch us on LO11 on Wednesday night at 7.30. Blue Jays trying to get some offense going here. Otis throws it off the glass. It looked like it was tipped off the glass and out of bounds by Watkins. And we're going to get our first look. Well, we're going to get a timeout before anything, and uh, hopefully we'll have that information for you. 18-11, our score. We've just played a minute of the second quarter, but neither coach likes what their offense is doing. Ticket sales. Okay, we're going to talk about the ticket sales. If you are a Lathrop or a Southfield student, that is the only way you're going to be able to get a chance to see this basketball game live at Southfield Lathrop. Advanced sale only for students. The students have to go to their respective athletic departments and get their tickets. The parents can purchase the tickets at the door. They need to have some identification. Uh, ID is required for purchase and entry into the game. Students must have their IDs to buy the tickets and to get into the game. Any middle school children may purchase only with parents. Uh, Southfield students park and enter on the north side. Southfield Lathrop students enter on the south side and park on the south side as well. Tickets for parents are available at the south entrance. And so if you don't uh, want to come out to the game or can't get out there, uh, watch us on LO11 on Wednesday at 7.30. But if you're going to buy tickets and you're a Southfield or Southfield Lathrop student, go to your uh, respective athletic departments. You know why? Because you can't get them at the door. Blue Jays trying to get it inbounds. Paul Ardafio. It's Ardafio along with uh, Paul Hubbard, Liddell Shepard, Charles Cartwright, Anthony Austin. We'll give you Ferndale's folks in uh, just a second. Dwayne Jones. Dwayne Jones Jr. checks in for Ferndale, and Charles Cartwright gets his third bucket of the game. Well, I tell you, Southfield is much more patient. They started out the game down eight to nothing. They've hung around. They've got themselves playing pretty well. Ferndale's getting into that, uh, you hate to pass the ball inbounds because you're never going to get it back, and the first guy down shoots it. Hoppy, Walker, Phillips, it's hanging, it's falling. Cartwright has eight, and the Blue Jays cut it back to five. Michael Walker is out there. We mentioned Dwayne Jones and uh, Watkins. Hopefully we got everybody in on the baseline. The layup goes, oh, he called it for traveling. Michael Walker, uh, excuse me, uh, Andre Watkins called for a Ferndale travel, and that is Ferndale's fifth turnover of the basketball game. Is uh, Dwayne Jones the son of athletic director be. Dwayne Jones? Got to be, former uh, basketball coach. I think he coached at Oakland University and at the University of Detroit. Correct, both of them. Then returned to Ferndale as athletic director. And Fine man. They love, they, they love him over there. DJ. Fine man. Yep. I want to also say hello to... Uh, We'll do it in just a second. Well, we're going to get a hand check foul. No, nope, we're going the other way. Anthony Austin uh, moves somebody out with the arm. Five. He's trying to get position against that zone. 
But Cartwright's the man who's found a home inside that zone and has uh, kept Southfield in the game. Got to take advantage when uh, Jarrett Stevens is not in the contest. And the Blue Jays have only cut two off of it. It's a three if it goes. No. Anthony Austin with a rebound. But uh, Dayfield does a rather. Shepard does a great job flying through and scoring. Oh, Adele Shepard. Great quickness. Has five. Three-point basketball game. Walker on the baseline. Blocked from behind by Anthony Austin. And here come the Blue Jays. Here they come. Paul Hubbard flying through. Baseliner, Cartwright. No, rebound comes down to Dwayne Jones. Walker now gets it ahead to Phillips. He's trying to make a move on Hubbard, but can't. Now to Hoppy right side, Walker. Fakes Austin inside. It goes to uh, Watkins. And Andre Watkins gets his third basket. Well, they move Hoppy out to that uh, guard spot to attack the zone, give him some passing lanes, and uh, they're getting the ball inside and getting some easy buckets uh, on the Southfield defense. Blue Jays turn it around again. We get a whistle and uh, substitution apparently that was not recognized as he was coming in. Reggie Ballard is uh, going to check in number 52, actually. And yeah, that is Reggie, a six foot two inch senior. And uh, Andre Watkins will sit down. Reggie looks like he came off the football field. I want to uh, wish the best to um, outgoing football coach John Bajer at Ferndale. Word is out that. Uh, good job inside by Bellardi. Went hard to the hole. And we're going to get a Liddell Shepard foul. And that'll be his first. And uh, the Blue Jays' team foul total now is six. Well, now with the tempo picked up like we have, Jim, uh, you're going to see him go to the line more because everybody's attacking the basket. Uh, good passes, good jumping. And uh, this is going to get into a real interesting ball game because I think it's the team that can bring the game back under control that's probably going to win it. Well, actually, the foul, as you may have seen or heard, is on Paul Ardefio, Reggie uh, Ballard at the uh, free throw line, and he comes into the contest uh, at a 50% mark. Ken Williams now will check in, and Ardefio will sit. So it will be the two big fellas up front, along with Anthony Austin, Liddell Shepard, and Paul Hubbard. Front iron, miss, rebound, Ken Williams. Ferndale Eagles shooting one out of seven from the free throw line so far. Well, and they've also had Jared Stevens out of there for quite a while, Jim, and he uh, uh, he was the main man putting the ball back up. They weren't shooting that well, but he was doing a great job of offensive rebounding. Speaking of offensive rebounding, Charles Cartwright, who came into this contest averaging about Let's see what he was averaging as far as the offensive rebounds were concerned. He came in averaging seven, eight rebounds a game, half and half. Well, here's a great offensive rebound, keeping it alive. That's a Dennis Rodman type. Tip it yourself off the glass, take it back up, go to the line. Great effort by Cartwright. Every high school coach would like a guy like Cartwright who uh, can play within himself and within the what the, he is needed to do. In other words, uh, don't be an outside threat when you've got uh, the Paul Hubbards of the world out there. Play your game inside, help out, and uh, he's done exactly that. He's a much improved young man since we saw him last year. Great pass and delivered nicely by Dwayne Jones to the basket, that is. Great pass by Michael Walker. Well, Walker made the pass, but Jones did a great job of protecting the block with using the rim and getting the ball in the hole. Cartwright, looked like somebody had a hand in his face on his turn jumper. Six point basketball game, and it was a three point game at uh, the end of the first quarter, 3.47 to go in the second. And uh, they have done a nice job, Ferndale has, without Jared Stevens in. This will be a three for Griffith there for uh, Phillips if it goes. And his first basket of the game comes from long range. Well, Phillips has that uh, Armstrong look about him. BJ, he's, uh, yeah. He's got that youthful look, but don't be fooled by it. The young man can play the game. He has a youthful look. <laughs> he's youthful. He's a sophomore, which yeah. puts him at about 14 years old or something. Anthony Austin's three if it goes. Does. Anthony Austin's first basket of the game comes from long range. And it's a six-point lead and a fine defensive effort by Paul Hubbard there. Now we're going to get uh, Robert Otis back in the game, and Liddell Shepard will sit. Harry Vandenbrink uh, has a couple of guys after his starting five, and then he starts getting nervous. 
Yeah, but he's got a lot of quickness out there and a lot of athletes. And as long as it stays into an athletic game, he can he can play with those people. Well, Williams will pick up his second foul as he tries to block Dwayne Jones' baseline jumper. Actually, he tried to block the baseline jumper of uh, Reggie Ballard. And so Reggie will go back to the unfriendly free throw line. What does Stevens have, two fouls on him, Jim? Uh, Stevens has two. That's why they set him. And uh, I'm sure if... Uh, if Don McNeil can get away with uh, having him sit the whole uh, second quarter, that uh, he won't really be too disappointed. No, as long as he can, uh, you know, stay at the lead that when Stevens went out of the ball game or even improved a little bit, there's no sense bringing him back in. You want your best players on the floor in that fourth quarter. It was a seven point. I, I misspoke myself earlier. It was a seven point lead uh, after one quarter, 18 to 11. And if the uh, free throws made there, uh, made here, the second one that is by Ballard, will get it uh, to a plus one for the quarter, and it does. So three minutes to go, second quarter, 29-21. Blue Jays uh, need some hoops here. Show a little bit of trap. They get it off to Robert Otis. Otis will pull up, corner to Austin. I think after Anthony's last three-pointer, they're going to be paying a little more attention to him as well. Trying to get Cartwright on the other side of the lane with the Williams on one side and Cartwright on the other. Two and a half to go. Blue Jays trying to move it inside. Cross-court Hubbard, nice catch. Back to Cartwright, short J, back iron, no. Good job by Anthony Austin. Great save, another save, but uh, unfortunately the court is not wide enough to accommodate that great save by Charles Cartwright. Well, you can see the newfound enthusiasm in the, the Blue Jay lineup here. Uh, you know, they started out season kind of sluggish. You just saw three people go after that ball big time. Those are the kind of people that Harry Vandenberg wants on his basketball team. And uh, he's made no secret of the fact that there are probably a couple of guys uh, in the hallways of Southfield High School that uh, could be playing on this basketball team. But uh, there's more to being a team player than putting numbers on the board. Anthony Austin rips it away. Hubbard will uh, draw the foul. Are they going to call it on Huff? No. No, no, they're gonna. Yeah, but they are gonna call it on uh, Phillips. Yeah, Rashad, Rashad Phillips, Phillips had both hands second. on. And now we're gonna get our first look at my very favorite name of all of the names that we have had over the last 12 years on LO11, Jim Schaffner. I wonder when they mispronounce his name if they call him Schaffron. I'm not sure. I well, do they call you Schaffner when they mispronounce? Yeah, that's why. Hence the line. Hub misses. Austin rebounds to the lane, hard, oh, great block by Ballard. Gets it down to Walker, who walks. Well, see, the, the tempo of this game's gotten to the point where neither team really can play at this, and that's why... Franklin Plakus and uh, Mr. Fryzer too. Uh, it is Friday, so uh, we've decided to come back formally and uh, welcome you back to Southfield High School Blue Jays Trail by 7. Next week, which is actually uh, our next game, 
uh, we will have for you the Southfield Lathrop Chargers and the Southfield Blue Jays. Well, remind the folks watching this game, this will be the only time the Southfield Ferndale game is going to run. We will have the uh, Lathrop Southfield game for you on Wednesday. Uh, if you want to get out and see that game, uh, again, then we'll go into it formally a little bit later, but you've got to buy your tickets in advance. Uh, at your respective athletic departments. The parents can purchase the tickets at the door. And the man on the left-hand side is, of course, Don McNeil. The young man in the sweater right behind him is uh, one of the fine basketball players that come out of Ferndale High School. And Frank Jaranko's uh, group, oh, not Jaranko, but... Uh, Roy Burkhardt. Roy Burkhardt. And uh, that is Kevin Keyes. Um, I was going to mention that uh, as we take a look at the leading scores, that uh, Ferndale's got a great basketball tradition under Roy Burkhart. They won eight straight league titles from 60 th uh, 263 to 6970. They were the state champs in 62-63 uh, and the 65-66 season. They were from 19, was it 1958, the 57-58 season to the 69-70 season, they won 12 out of 13 SMA crowns. Yeah, Roy Burkhart was an outstanding coach uh, back when I was in high school in 1960. And in 59, we went over and scrimmaged Ferndale, and uh, at that time, we were the premier of the Catholic League, and we liked going over there because his teams were always ready. Interesting starting lineup to start that second half. Jared Stevens is back in there, but for the Blue Jays, Anthony Austin and Liddell Shepard, and Cartwright, no call as uh, he goes hard to the hole, and the ball knocked out of bounds. Hermes is in there, along with uh, Rashad Phillips, Hoppy. Watkins and Jarrett Stevens. Paul Ardafio back out to Liddell Shepard. At five and a quarter, lays it up no. Rebound, Hoppy. Hoppy ahead. What a great play by Cartwright. Unfortunately, he couldn't get back in bounds quickly enough, but a great comeback that time by number 40. Doing a terrific job defensively. Well, Phillips was going to flip off for the, for the jam out of Stevens. Cartwright did a great job of hustling back getting the ball. And Anthony Austin challenges that play. Gets it back offensively. Now with a spin move. Throws it up wildly. Didn't want that to happen. And it comes down to the hands of uh, Amar Hermes. Well, we talk about... Uh, you know, driving over the speed limit right now. You're seeing it out here. See if Shep's going to take it by himself, and he will, into the hands of Hoppy. So the Blue Jays are getting the shots, and they're running the offense, but unfortunately, they're not going down. Oh, Hermes wide open baseline. Yeah, with the transition that they have going right now, someone's got to just take charge of the basketball, slow things down a little bit. doing a good job on Paul Hubbard. Hubbard only had five points, three of those from the line. Great lean in by Cartwright. No. Tip our debut. No. Cartwright again. Oh, my. Well, Cartwright's showing, uh, you know, his jumping ability, that quick leap. Uh, he's having an outstanding night tonight. Seven-point basketball game. 6.25 to go third quarter. Ferndale has been in the lead throughout. And Jarrett Stevens. No, you give it to the man down there. Yeah. You give it to him on the box. It's all over. The only question is whether you're going to follow him. Stevens had all 11 of his points in the first quarter. His first two points since that time. Six-minute mark. It's a nine-point basketball game. Blue Jays need a run. They couldn't do anything with him out of there. Shepard to the hole. And Shepard draws the foul. Liddell Shepard goes back to the line. Ferndale foul will be on Sean Hoppy, and that'll be his third. Well, you're going to see out of control again. You're going to go and uh, get the ball in, and uh, he gets hammered. I tell you, but, uh, you know, the defensive people are trying to trying to cover up on, and help out, and they come out of control. They're just knocking people to the floor. And you're talking about the defense being out of control. Yeah, the defense was out of control. Yeah. Yeah. But what they're doing is they're running that help defense, and a weak side man slow getting there, and he comes not under control, and that's about the third time they've knocked a south field player to the floor. Shep, three out of four from the line so far. Actually, two out of three from the line. Would like to go away from the line three out of four, and he will. Love those little guys with quickness. They're going to need that against Lathrop for the end of the, uh, on Tuesday night. They're going to need a lot against Lathrop. Hop! Oh, the Cartwright! He plants it! Oh, Charles Cartwright has 15. Stevens, look out. Cartwright went up. About all he could have done that time went straight up trying to get him, and he got him for 
the third time Charles Cartwright has whistled for a foul. But Jared Stevens is going to come back, put one down, and even this thing out because uh, you get momentum when you jam on somebody, and that's that in-your-face stuff. You're going to see a great jam, and uh, this is, uh, you know, Class A. Then they're going to come right back, and Jared Stevens is going to go and try to try to put it right over Cartwright, and this is in your face back again. You know, it's a scary thought to see what happened oh, yeah. because we remember we, last year, the uh, first time we were here, Southfield and Oak Park, and how uh, the collision between Ryan Perriman and Paul Hubbard caused, uh, you know, a lot of, it was a real scary, scary proposition. Well, when you go in to jam that ball like that and uh, put it down and you get hooked, you take your feet out from under you and, you know, anything can happen. Well, here we go once again. Uh, the Ticketmaster speaking to you uh, about how you get a chance to see the Blue Jays and the Chargers in action. If you are a student, you must purchase the tickets in advance. They will not be available at the door. The parents may purchase the tickets at the door. However, ID will be required by for parents and for students for the students to purchase and also to get into the game. Uh, any of the middle school children that want to see their uh, siblings uh, play basketball, um, can only come in with their parents' ticket purchase. Uh, they've got to buy their own tickets, but they must be accompanied by an adult. Southfield students go in the north side, park on the north side. Lathrop students go on the south side and park on the south side. The tickets for the parents will be available at the ticket booth, which is in the south entrance. So we've got that done, and um, our currency and Jim Cortegas wanted us to mention that, and indeed, we have done so. We'll do it a couple more times before the game's over. Jarrett Stevens, by the way, hit his first free throw, missed four straight. He has uh, just another one, and we get an over the back on Cartwright. Oh, my, that Whoa. is four on Cartwright. Well, you know that all broke down, Jim, is when he, he allowed him to circle him, get it inside position, and uh, then end up over the back. And a lot of times you see the great jumpers, they don't play those fundamentals. Well, Harry Vandermeer, has got to look down the end of the bench, and uh, he's not going to find Ken Williams. Oh, rolling around, kept alive by Dwayne Jones, who's checked back in the basketball game. Here's Shepard. He's flying down the middle corner. I'm impressed with Shepard. He gets himself under control. And for a sophomore, he's got a, a, lot, of, a lot of court sense out there. I tell you, Cartwright went flying through there, too, and Anthony Austin did a great job of getting inside and uh, going to the line. And here's what penetration does. We talk about it every week. And, uh, you know, he gets the ball down. It's a great offensive rebound, and there's the hammer. Foul was on. Number 33 is 33, Andre Watkins. Austin at the line, he has, uh, it's his first trip at the line tonight. Well, uh, Southfield slowly creeping themselves back into the game. They got it down to six. They could have cut it to four. They need this one. They've got to get themselves a, a, the points on the board while the clock stops. Austin, a 56% uh, foul shooter, and uh, unfortunately for the Blue Jays, uh, they have failed at the line not too many times in the game. Hermes for three. I saw him, uh, I think as a sophomore against Oak Park, just light it up from downtown. Here's Shep. He's going to hit it off the baseline, Liddell Shepard. But, Jim, he took a three earlier, and they yanked him. And the thing is, if you do it off of the coast to coast, nobody's ready for it. They're all getting in position to make their cut. And uh, you catch people soft, and you've got to do it off the kick out. And uh, he's just shooting it up prematurely. Phillips. Trying to get it into Jones, uh, Watkins did, and it was picked off nicely by Robert Otis. Otis very active defensively as well tonight, and Watkins will pick up his second foul. So that is the third team foul on Ferndale, and the Blue Jays will inbounds and uh, try to cut this lead in half. They've done a very nice job in the quarter. They have, and underneath, Otis fires and fills it, that's Shepard. He just fought his way to the hole again. Liddell Shepard has six in the quarter, and the Blue Jays are down a deuce. Well, Stevens backed off. He didn't want to pick up the foul, and that's what you got to do. You got to keep yourself in the game, but uh, you've got to cut down that penetration early. Watkins wide open, can't get it down. Hubbard rebound. 
poor judgment that time on the Paul Hubbard pass. It's picked off by Hermes. He's got it underneath off of Jones, out of bounds. Good hands, Blue Jays no on the Blue Jay call, but it's going to be Ferndale basketball. The man who snuck in on us, and it's hard to when you're wearing a headband, but that is Ray uh, Broadnex, a six foot five senior. Baseliner no, and off of the Eagles and out of bounds. Well, they're driving over the speed limit again if you're Ferndale. Uh, they're busting the ball up the floor. I know they want to run it, but you got to stay under a control speed, something that you can handle. And uh, right now they're playing a little bit out of control. Blue Jays, a chance to tie it for the first time. Shepard. Shepard and Hubbard, and Hubbard's driving, laying it up and wide open. Paul Hubbard gets his first two of the second half. He's got seven, and the Blue Jays have tied it at 36, and we're going to get a Ferndale timeout. The Blue Jays have outscored the Ferndale Eagles in this quarter 12 to 5 with 3.47 to go in the third quarter. And uh, Frank, we alluded to it a minute ago. It's the Blue Jays and the Chargers. There are many people who feel that Lathrop is as good as anybody in the, uh, in the Metro Suburban Association. And I talked to Bob Herm, and he said they had a great shot at beating the, the team that everybody thought would win this, uh, this league, uh, and that's Rochester. If Lathrop is focused, they can beat anybody. Well, there's four teams in that league that could win it. And uh, Rochester made a big step toward going to the top by beating, the, you know, having a two-point win over Adams and a two-point win over Southfield Lathrop. And that puts them in a, in a real strong position in the head-on-head -head competition. It'll be interesting. And uh, the Blue Jays, hopefully they will be able to rise to the occasion. Uh, it really, there really haven't been a lot of mismatches in this rivalry over the years. But, and obviously Bob Herm's concern is the fact to uh, remind his team that uh, they really need this victory, if nothing else, for a continuity type of situation. Okay, Michael Walker's uh, back in the basketball game. He's in the backcourt along with Phillips. Hermes and Stevens and Watkins uh, make up uh, the rest of Don McNeil's five that are out there right now. Broadnax and Hubbard, Shepard and Otis and Austin. There's the drive. Wild shot that time by Phillips. Hermes loses the basketball and the ball knocked out of bounds. Broadnax, great job to uh, come down with it. Now to Shepard. Shepard looks to penetrate. Now to Broadnax, outside 15 for the guard. Well, you talk about momentum shift here in the Southfield, oh, believing it right now, my. and even the people coming in off the bench are putting it in the hole. After two, as we mentioned, oh, Broadnecks went up too fast, but Hubbard found it. Ahead it goes to Otis, to Austin off the baseline, no. Shepard goes up for it, back up, and in! Goaltending would have been the call in and not gone down, but Liddell Shepard. And Liddell Shepard has 13 points, nine of those in the third quarter. Oh, my. Well, Southfield, you know, as we said, they're the team that has come more under control. And I'm, I'm going to give Shepard the credit. He's the person who has held the ball up on the break to where they've gotten to a speed where they could handle it. Found the open man, did the penetration. Ferndale, on the other hand, they've been blowing the ball up the floor, and then they've been doing drastic things with it when they get there. Michael Walker works it against... Uh, I was going to say it works it against Hubbard. Not a hoppy baseline walker, but how about to get him? Hoppy Elliot oh, goes inside. Goes up to the floor, and Jared Stevens will pick up his third foul. Well, they're fronting Stevens. He's getting frustrated in that zone, and uh, he just took two hands, put him right in the middle of the defender's back, and pushed off. Right now, Southfield has everything going for him. In, uh, that's ill-advised. That's those coast-to-coast yep. -coast threes are just not what you need when you got things going. 16 to five, great defensive play by Hubbard who came back and intercepted the LU pass. But uh, the Blue Jays, as you mentioned, uh, you get that lead, you gotta play a little bit more in control. Well, the, the three shot, three point shot's Ooh. never bad, Jim. It's just as bad when you come coast to coast and fire. Anthony Austin on the foul. Frank, I don't know about you, but it looked like on that inbounds, the, the player jumped up in the air and came down before he inbounded the basketball. What, from out of bounds? Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's illegal. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look it up in the rule book. I know you can't take steps on there. I don't know about jumping up and down. 
No, he just rose up. Uh, anyway, Steven scores, and Anthony Austin picks up his second foul. Next, he may picks up his third foul. Stevens hits the free throw, and it's a one-point basketball game. Jarrett Stevens has 18. Blue Jays on the break, a driving broad next reverses. No, the rebound Watkins. Oh my! Boy, Ray Broadnax showing some. Uh, now we're going to get a Robert Otis foul, but Broadnax is showing uh, that some great hustle. Well, Jim, I don't know if you happened to see Sports Center the other night with the with the barking dog decoy on the out of bounds play. Yeah, and that was outstanding. I thought I've seen it all, but uh, that was a new one. Inside of two minutes, and Ken Williams getting ready to check back in. Stevens open on the knee. That's four. Two in this quarter. Now, and Southfield's done a great job with Cartwright out of there to bring themselves back in, get a lead in this ballgame. I don't think Ferndale would have the same response with Stevens out of there. Well, Reggie Ballard's going to come in now, and the Blue Jays did not do a thing when Jarrett Stevens sat the last time. Will they be able to make some inroads here considering the great comeback that they have made so far in the third quarter? Tough to say. We'll see what happens. Ken Williams back in up front. Hubbard out of control again. Ran right into Michael Watkins. He gets it to Hoppy, who again Step. walks. This Step. time they called it. And again, earlier, it was pretty obvious. It was basically the same thing. This time they uh, they got an eyeful from underneath the basket. Yeah, he has trouble putting that dribble in, but uh, uh, there's a Walker. they out of control. We've been talking about Southfield, or uh, Ferndale defensively, Jim, is just being not in position. Then they accelerate to the ball. They give you that hustle, but they're uh, out of control, commit the foul. And usually, and the reason I brought this up earlier was because of the fact that you usually hear the term out of control in offensive terms. Ray Broadnax takes a great pass from Paul Hubbard. He gets his second basket of this very entertaining third quarter for Blue Jay fans and alums. Hoppy tries to dump it off inside. Can't get it. Walker fakes, goes to the baseline, and they're going to call it off. It's a foul, a charge, no, if you will, no, he, on Walker. He put his hand behind his head. Yeah, he changed it. He changed it back. Just got excited on the call. So the change will retain possession the other way. Broadnex picks up his first foul. And the Blue Jays' three-point lead in jeopardy. Oh, my. Ken Williams got a hand on the inbounds pass to Ballard. And Reggie is fouled, and he will go to the line. Jim, I get to see what they're doing on this out of bounds play. They've uh, that's two in a row. They've stepped right in and gotten position, and uh, someone's falling asleep on defense down here. They're they're giving the ball, and uh, one man steps out, the other just steps in, and it's a uh, it's an easy layup. Uh, Stevens had it earlier, and now we're sitting at the live shoot free throw. And Reggie Pilar missed his first two. He's made three straight. Those are his points tonight. A minute 17 to go in the third quarter. The Blue Jays trailed by as many as uh, 10 points at one time, and they've made a nice comeback. Ballard misses. Jones gets the rebound, loses it to his own teammate, Walker. That almost went down. And so four straight possessions, the Blue Jays have been called for fouls, and that puts them over the limit. The foul's going to be on Williams, and that's his second straight foul and his fourth. So he's got four. Cartwright has four. And Anthony Austin, who's going to come in to replace him, has three. Yeah, the big people are getting in trouble inside with all that jumping going on both sides. And uh, I think it's uh, whomever can have the best people on the floor the last four minutes are going to win the basketball game. That's the old John Wooden theory. Michael Walker gets it to roll and gets it to go. Michael uh, coming in the basketball game as a 57% foul shooter. first two points and they're two big ones because it ties the score at 42 and they're having trouble with a trap. Otis throws it in the middle of Austin. I had the broad next. Be careful. Oh! Gonna get the tee though. He hung on it. You make it come down like that. There was uh, nobody no reason and it's a shame because all tees are two points or two shots now. So you've got an opportunity and of, not, of not only going and giving them the two points, but you give them the ball back. And he also picks up his second personal. Yeah, and they count as personals now. 
Now they're trying to decide who's going to shoot the, uh, the free throws here. They're going to put the shaft in to shoot the free throws, yeah, which you right. can do. In high school basketball, you can bring anybody on the team in to shoot the free throws. Yep. And uh, many teams now have gone to the free throw board, and the person with the best percentage in practice steps up there. Yeah, the shaft at the line. He's two out of two so far in the season. Got to get the shaft on the board. He's a left-hander, too. that one but they get the ball back and a uh, chance to take the lead with a minute five to go in the third quarter. I wonder if he's on a radio station in football season over there at uh, Ferndale. I don't know. <laughs> I'm I, know check what you're gonna, I know what you're going to say and we were going to do it at the end of the second quarter but I wasn't thinking quick enough <laughs> to show the shaft at the half. Great steal by Broadnax. He'll be in control this time against Hoppy. The layup goes. So Broadnax has come in and scored four baskets, puts the Blue Jays up by three with 40 seconds to go in the quarter. But here you are with the ball, and you just, you know, as I said, I call it over the speed limit. Uh, you, everybody has their their speed that they can play in a comfort zone. And right now, Ferndale has played the whole quarter about 10 miles an hour quicker than what they can handle. Paul Hubbard moves it to the right side now for uh, Liddell Shepard. Robert Otis looking inside. He'll bring it back and set up for the final shot. Broadnecks way outside. I don't think that's where Harry and Gary and uh, and Hank want him. And he almost lost the ball to Shep. Looking for move. Great pass inside. Otis off the glass. No. Kept alive by Austin. They got to shoot. Austin fires off the glass. And the Blue Jays still make to retain possession even though they could not score on the final possession of the third quarter. Well, it has turned into a pretty good, exciting basketball game. The Blue Jays scoring 22 points in the third quarter to take a 46-43 lead. The pace of the game not only affects the players, but the officials. Yeah, the officials are moving up and down the floor, and you're going to have some bumping, and you're going to have some no calls that if the game was more under control, those those would be calls, but you can't just call everything. I mean, I'm telling you, people, you, you don't understand how fast these people are going up and down the floor. It's a tremendous tribute to the condition of the athletes, but uh, Ferndale that whole quarter uh, just never was in sync. Yeah, they scored 12 points, and we're going to get a foul. No, no out, of out of bounds. We'll, we'll let you know that both teams will be shooting free throws the rest of the game because uh, the next uh, foul on Ferndale will put Southfield in a one-and-one, -and, -one and the uh, offensively speaking, Ferndale is a one-and-one. -one. The shaft sits down, and uh, he leaves way for Rashad Phillips. I'm sure that's what they call him. <laughs> How can you not? <laughs> Dwayne Jones is out there. Sean Hoppy. That pass almost got over the hands of Michael Walker. Walker. Got to remember, Jarrett Stevens on the uh, Pines with four fouls. Four fouls for the two big guys, too, for the Blue Jays. Ken Williams and Charles Cartwright. Bounce pass right side. It goes to Phillips. Fernhill's going to slow it down and uh, probably frustrate the Blue Jays a bit. Phillips off the back iron. No. Good rebound by DJ. That was, a, that was a big, big rebound by Mr. Jones out there because that uh, put it back to a one-point ball game, and uh, Ferndale showed some patience, got it down, got the offensive rebound. There's the charge, though. No, going to call a block. No, he's no, going to no. call a charge. Okay. He calls a block on that. I'm going home. I'm going home. Took a while. I'm so used to uh, watching collegiate and uh, pro basketball where, where they, the officials just are so quick because of the fact that they do it 80, 90 times a year. Yeah. And uh, in in high school basketball, no question about it. Uh, it's very methodical because also a lot of the people that are on the sideline are not uh, attuned to, uh, you know, watching the fast pace. Well, of the and game. all those gentlemen out there are, you know, they have day jobs. I mean, it's... Whoa. So, so do the announcers. <laughs> yeah. Another offensive foul on Hubbard. But see, that's the... Now Southfield's out of control, and that's... Uh, I tell you, you got to take a time out and you got to tell your kids. You get under control, let them make the mistakes, you'll win the basketball game. I don't care which side, which huddle you want to do it in, 
but one of them's got to do it. You got to have a timeout here. I don't care which coach does it. Long three by Walker, rebounded by Sean Hoppy. Rashad Phillips. DJ dumps it off to Phillips. Blue Jays doing a good job of finding and staying with their man. Jones, right side, Michael Walker. Now to Jones, right side. Here comes Phillips under the hockey. Great penetration and a great result for the Eagles as they take the lead now, 47-46. Yeah, that short corner is one of the toughest plays in basketball to defend. Phillips did a great job of penetrating and setting up the dish. Shepard, front iron, no. We got a push off underneath on Hoppy, and it's going to be his fourth foul, and the Blue Jays will shoot some free throws. Yeah, with the push off, they've got to be coming walking down, and uh, well, they're going to stay at that end and shoot them. But, uh, you know, we talk about the foul difficulty. Everybody's sitting there, a lot of key men with four, Jim, and uh, who's going to be around the last four minutes? That's got to be my theme right now. So one and one for Broadnax. He is five out of five on the season. First one is on the board. Nice stroke for Ray. We get a horn and revisiting the lineup is Amar Hermes who only has two points in this basketball game and he comes in averaging about eight points a contest. Well, if Hermes could play under control, he's got tremendous talent. Uh, he just wants to do things premature. He could go and really help his ball club bring him right back and give him a lead. What a great, great uh, effort off the bench for Ray Broadnax. Ray Broadnax came in this game in the first eight Blue Jay contests, almost a steal. He's going to commit his third foul. In the first eight Southfield games, he had a total of 31 points. He's got 10 tonight. Well, you know, a couple wins sure uh, rejuvenates team spirit, gets things going. And I'm sure that win over Andover you know, it was a big plus. Yeah, and over a much, much improved basketball team, and they have beaten, uh, well, they were, they won their first six, if I'm not mistaken. They were six and two, I think, going into uh, um, the last uh, couple of weeks. They lost uh, last night. Carried it out of bounds. They lost last night to Troy, uh, Jim Clary, the uh, fine coach of Troy, and a lot of folks' uh, choice to win the SMA this year. Yeah, I think with Ferndale having their problems, uh, you know, Troy could pull that out. Uh, they've got a real experienced team, and Jim, we saw them when they had some injuries early in the year. They're playing real tough basketball right now. Now, Paul Hubbard, who has uh, been steining, he's got seven points tonight. Came in averaging about uh, 16. There's a steal by Phillips. Great intimidation that time by Liddell. Shepard, he came back and intimidated the shot, and the follow-up was just knocked out of bounds. That's Blue a couple Jay. super solids right there. I'll tell boy. you something. The two of the finer ones in this league. There's Shepard. Trying to jump off underneath to Robert Otis. Ball goes out of bounds. But Jim, I really like Shepard's. Uh, uh, vision in his patience out there. It's hard to believe he's just a sophomore when he can go and uh, see the floor like he does. Charles Cartwright with his four fouls back in the contest. One point basketball game. Blue Jays in the lead. Michael Walker tries to penetrate. Cannot do so. Now out to Hermes as the Blue Jays and the Ferndale Eagles are going to take it down to the wire. It's interesting, Southfield has elected to bring Cartwright back in the ball game. And uh, Ferndale, I, I'm sure after that four minute mark, is going to bring Stevens back in. Yeah, that, that's got to be a tough call by both coaches. And in fact, uh, Broadnax has come back down to sit next to Coach Harry Vandenbrink. Well, I think uh, Southfield played so well with their substitutes that Harry's a little more confident that if, if Cartwright goes out, they can stay in the ball game. Where uh, Stevens is a big plus if they get him back in. Oh, look what Cartwright found, but slapped away by Ballard. Austin fires no. That ball went off a walker and out of bounds, and the Blue Jays will set up the offense under their offensive glass. I think we got to give that block to Jones. I'm going to give him credit because right. he stepped over, did a great job, quick jump, and they got up yeah, there. Yeah, Reggie not even in there. 50, not 52. Way out it goes to Robert Otis. 
Good job of playing in control. He's going to start his drive, lose the basketball, but he had a reason. At least Art Zisk saw the reason, and he's going to blow the whistle and call the foul. It's going to be Michael Walker's foul, and it's going to be Mike's second. And it will send Robert Otis to the free throw line. And Robert Otis, a 40% foul shooter, two out of five. Hopefully, uh, they're hoping for a little more adrenaline to get the ball in the hole. Well, when you're this excited, you go to the front of the rim with the ball because most shots when they're missed late in the game when you got that adrenaline flow are deep on the rim. Otis has three. Just a few seconds over the halfway mark of this basketball game. He's got his first two of the contest. Three-point basketball game. And again, uh, the question when they're going to bring uh, Jarrett Stevens in more than likely after this Ferndale timeout, which comes with four minutes and a penny to go in the fourth quarter. The Blue Jays lead it by the score of 50 to 47. And we want to remind you, if you want to learn more about animals and their habitats, join host Tim Nowicki and uh, his guests on the Animal Club every Wednesday at 6 and Saturdays at 5.30. The... Uh, uh, actually, Mrs. Still's class, the fourth grade class from Ely Elementary, will uh, be in the audience. And uh, I understand uh, this year they're not making the students clean up after the animals after the <laughs> show's over. But it's Wednesday at 6, Saturdays at 5.30, only on Hello 11. Blue Jays and Chargers are our next contest. We'll be at Southfield Lathrop on Tuesday. You can see it right here on Wednesday at 7.30. Briefly stated, students have to buy their tickets in advance for this one. The parents can buy their tickets uh, where at the door. And there we are, Frank. There's a couple There's celebrities. Christina. She's down there, uh, down in the stage country safari down there. I see her. My old uh, stop. Let me tell you the, the shaft story real quick. Uh-oh, again. No, no, I was going over the story. I was going over the roster uh, and the starters and the extra guys with uh, with Don McNeil, and we got down to uh, his, his bench guys, his four or five guys that he's going to bring in after the starters, and I said, well, who else you got? He goes, Jim Schaffner, and I go, very funny. I haven't picked up a basketball in two years, and then I realized there is number 22 on the roster. Right now, Jarrett Stevens back in the basketball game. Hermes has it. He's holding it outside. Drops it in for Stevens. Goes up and cannot score. Kept alive, though, by Cartwright in the hands of Paul Hubbard. Yeah, they set it up. They isolated. They got the ball to Stevens. He didn't convert. Oh, and here's Hub, the penetration. All the way down. No, tip. Cartwright, no. And it was kept alive by Stevens. And here come the Eagles. Hermes will back it away now. He'll dump it off to Stevens. Walks step, on the baseline. Step, step, step. Yeah, he gave the ball fake, and then he slid those feet to get in position to step in. And, uh, you know, he sat on the bench almost half of this basketball game, Jim, even a little more than half. Yep. And, uh, you know, that's tough. It's tough coming back in, and they watch it perform at peak. Robert Otis will take it away from the basket where he's double teamed now outside the Hubbard. Starts his drive, loses control. Otis picks it back up. He'll fire from 15, a front iron miss. He'll chase it down, a great job in front of Michael Walker and the Blue Jays again. I think he thought the shot clock was running down, Jim. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you're holding the ball. You got to get yourself a drive oh. and look at the hole. <laughs> Penn City. to Jones. Take it out of the air by Cartwright. Well, that's two. They've got the ball downstairs where they wanted to, and that's two, uh, two conversions they didn't get, and they're sitting here five points behind Southfield nursing the lead. Loses the ball to Stevens. Six-point lead, two minutes to go. Hermes, three on the way. A back iron miss right in the hands of Liddell Shepard. Oh, my. And no, Frank gave me that look as if to say, uh, you don't take those shots right now, young man. Yeah, there's, got to, there's a time and a place, and Southfield's going to take a timeout, set up their uh, their delay game. Probably. It, it's going to be free throw time here. And probably so that they don't uh, take shots like that when they're on offense. We yeah. want to tell you that you can get more information about food, travel, health, and more. And uh, you can watch... 
Get information on those and other topics uh, every week on Lifetime's this half-hour series is of special interest to the mature audience, about the mature audience. Lifetime's can be seen Mondays at 8.30, Tuesdays at 7.30, Saturdays at 5 o'clock only on Continental's Channel 11. And you know, uh, one of the segments is uh, with uh, somebody I know, Dr. Sidney Goldman, we're going to talk about when you need a knee replacement and what, it's, what it takes, uh, rehabilitation and all the mechanical stuff. Not for the faint of heart, but very interesting segment.